And welcome back. Let's take a look at our question of the day now. We're asking you this morning, looking at the number of schools that have recorded positive COVID-19 cases, do you think that the decision to reopen school needs to be revisited? Love to hear your response to that. At Morning Live SABC is our handle. And please use the hashtag Morning Live SABC as well. All right. So that's the question. We're also going to be doing an interview with the Department of Education today as well. So stay tuned for that one. Let's, uh, let's move on to the stories of the day now, the bail application of the six accused in the Andile Mbutu murder case is due to resume in the very low magistrate's court in KwaZulu-Natal today. The 17-year-old was assaulted after he was accused of stealing alcohol from a local tavern. And again, according to those figures released by the Health Ministry last night, total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in South Africa now at 70,038. We have um, a number of deaths standing at 1,480. Total number of 38,531 uh, recoveries and the total number of active cases this morning standing at 30,027. And those are the uh, information lines that you may need. The 24-hour hotline, 0800 9 And uh, also that WhatsApp support line is 0600 456 and then just taking a look at uh, those statistics, uh, the provincial breakdown, as it were. So you, we have in the Western Cape 42,539 cases. That's up by 1,934 from the previous day. Um, in the Eastern, in Gauteng, rather, 11,164, up 1,267. The Eastern Cape is up by 777 cases, now standing at 10,027. KZNSC an increase of 111 to 3,874. There have been 120 more positive cases in the Northwest Province and that total now at 1,097. Free State, uh, 495, that's uh, eight, uh, 30, up by 38. Limpopo Province, 326 plus 817 there. Mpumalanga has had 26 more cases, bringing it to 297 and 12 more cases reported in the North Northern Cape, bringing that total to 156. All right, let's just take a look at the overall picture now. So, tests conducted are now sitting uh, at uh, 1.2 million, which is which is a, a, a very very high number at this point in time. Doing quite well on the testing front, but the backlog is the concern. And I know that that was a lot of what the Sunday papers were leading with the backlog and whether or not we can get to the bottom of getting to these tests and whether or not they'll be valid or not. That's you know the the, the question that's being asked. I know this was uh, yesterday brought up by a couple of uh, of um, you know medical experts in the papers yesterday. Confirmed cases 70,038. So South Africa now over the, the 70,000. Recoveries, 38,531. The deaths are at 1,480. And active cases right now in South Africa, 30,027. The global picture again, 7.5 million confirmed cases around the world. 423,000 deaths, up 5,000 yesterday. Uh, the United States still unfortunately leading the pack there. They recorded 654 deaths yesterday. 117,000 is where they're sitting. They've got 2.1 million cases, an increase of 25,800 yesterday. And in Brazil, fast approaching that million mark, they're now at 870,000 cases. The death toll is at 43,380 yesterday alone, uh, recording 612 deaths from COVID coronavirus. Moving on to those trending topics now. First up, hashtag Sasa. Now, Sasa trending for many reasons, but mainly among them, the fact that people have been declined and they've re receiving these decline messages for the 350 uh, Relief of Social Distress grant. And um, so many people have applied for this and it seems that uh, for the majority of them, they are receiving these responses saying um, your application for Sasa COVID-19 SRD grant is declined. You currently have income from other sources. 
And this is what people are disputing, that income from other sources, because they say they are applying precisely because they have no other income. But Sasa, as you would remember when they were explaining, Leanne, was saying that they were working through various databases, such as the UIF, such as NASFAS, and um, other tax bases to ensure that people were not receiving other incomes. So people are complaining, and it would seem as though um, the system and people's expectations are not meeting one another. And as if that is not enough, apparently there are some scams going around as well where people are asking people to provide information, banking information and uh, their personal details. And these, we are told, are scams. So uh, just be aware. Um, we'll put out those scam alerts if we can. So you are aware if you see a message such as that, uh, where it asks you for your banking details, you know, your card number. It asks you for um, all sorts of numbers, as it were. That one, we are told, is a scam. So beware of that one. All right, the next, uh, the next uh, trending topic, South African Parliament. And it seems this is uh, on the back of uh, uh, the gender-based violence and trying to get parliamentarians to listen to this. This is apparently what this is all about. Um, uh, it, it's something around about, it's good to see 630,000 people have already signed. Please take a second uh, to sign this. It's uh, to South African Parliament. Parliament needs to address gender-based violence. We sign the petition. And this has gained a little bit of momentum. And that's pretty much so what South Africans are asking and begging for is that something must be done with regard to gender-based violence in the country. And now, of course, it's this uh, this petition that they've got going. It'll be interesting to see where the, uh, where the numbers are sitting right now. And I can see it's not only a local uh, people that are, are, are talking on this. I think a lot of people have actually gone ahead and signed it from around the world. So anyway, this morning I can see that there's 630,000 signatures. They're trying to get to a million. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it is, it is something that South Africa, enough is enough and something has to be done. And there are just far too many of these cases every single day happening in the country. Indeed, and you saw another one in the news there, Evelyn de Kock, yeah. um, this morning. Yeah. And these are only the ones that make the news headlines, Leanne. Indeed. Too many others Indeed. don't. The majority, in fact, don't make the news headlines. Yeah. And then uh, finally, hashtag day 81 mm. of the lockdown. Unbelievable. Well, I mean, just to uh, get a little bit of perspectives as of yesterday. So I'm just reading a report saying South Africa has the sixth highest number of new coronavirus cases in the world today. Uh, this was yesterday, the reporting figures. These obviously these numbers fluctuate quite a lot. Um, and, you know, it, it gives a sense of the global scale, though, where South Africa fits into this. And South Africa, number six in terms of the new cases reported. So with that increase yesterday that we saw of 4,302, we're sitting behind Pakistan, who had 6,825. Chile had 6,938 and all the way up to the USA uh, that took the top spot of 18,000 cases. India just below that at 11,000. But just to give you a perspective of where we're sitting in terms of infections, so that curve is getting steeper and steeper. It really is with infections. And it certainly is. And uh, just by the way, as a matter of interest, today, uh, Monday, June the 15th, is World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So, you know, want to take cognizance of and uh, hopefully uh, we'll be good we'll be kind to our elders not just today but always yeah all right with that let's take a quick break before we get back to